بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. Since every night, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to have a little icebreaker. So tonight, inshallah ta'ala, I want you to introduce yourself to the person next to you. And I want you to share one thing that you don't think, one interesting fact about you that you don't think the other person knows. So first your name, and then something interesting about you that you don't think the other person knows. So bismillah, go ahead. Right or left? They've got to be real facts, by the way. I heard someone say he was Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> okay. All right. MashaAllah, it's obviously really interesting. Back to Khatira, guys. Time out. <laughs> you can continue the conversations now outside, inshallah ta'ala. We've obviously discovered we have some pretty cool people in the community, right? Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. I think, inshallah ta'ala, every night or so, maybe not every single night, but we'll do something again. The idea is to, inshallah ta'ala, connect everyone in the community. Before you know it, hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, you'll know, you'll know the people that are praying next to you in a much better way, inshallah. Now, something that uh, many of you might not know about what we're reading tonight, by the way, and in general, every night now we're covering one juz. So it's always good to read what you do, what, what's going to be read, inshallah ta'ala, especially if you don't understand Arabic, to read a translation, a rough translation of what's going to be covered, um, you know, in, in the tarawih. So which juz are we on tonight? Anyone know? We're on the ninth juz. So tomorrow we'll be on the tenth juz and so on and so forth until we finish inshallah ta'ala. So keep that in mind. Now, in the beginning of this month we talked about the structure of the Qur'an, the coherence of the Qur'an. Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran. We particularly looked at those surahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the best dua in Surah Al-Fatiha. And then an explanation of that dua in Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to ask him for guidance and to not be like those who came before us, those who earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who went astray. Surah Al-Baqarah primarily focused on which group of people? Those who earned the anger of Allah or those who went astray? Those who earned the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people of Musa alayhi salam. Surah Ali Imran went to those who have gone astray. Now afterwards we have a heavy dose of laws, right? One of the reasons why people went astray in the past is because when the laws were given to them, they always tried to find loopholes and they, they, you know, they either you know, defiantly rejected those laws or they tried to find loopholes. So actually, part of the, you know, probably the heaviest dosage of laws that we have in the Qur'an of Ahkam comes in the next portion. Okay? Now let's name the surahs, by the way. What's the first surah in the Qur'an? Surah Al-Fatiha. A lot of people said Baqarah. All right, second surah, Al-Baqarah. Third surah, Ali Imran. Fourth surah, fifth surah, Al-Ma'idah. Sixth surah, Surah Al-An'am. Seventh surah. Uh oh, some people have different Qurans up here. All right, Surah Al-A'raf, and then, then Al-Anfal. Okay. So we go through these surahs in this order, all right? So now we have a heavy dose of laws. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us many, many, many laws. Laws that concern sacrifice, eating, food, drink, laws that concern uh, inheritance, laws that concern the way that, we, the, the way that we deal with our families and so on and so forth. A heavy dose of ahkam, of laws. And subhanAllah, we then come into, particularly Surah Al-An'am, then Surah Al-A'raf, then Surah Al-Anfal, these three surahs take a different tone. And by the way, the interesting thing about these three surahs is they were actually revealed somewhat in succession. Okay? So, Surah Al-An'am is towards the end of Mecca. It starts in the end of Mecca, finishes within Medina. Alright? Then we have Surah Al-A'raf, which is a Madani surah. And Surah Al-A'raf, by the way, is an interesting surah. It was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ uh, right after 
he, he, he did Hijrah, and then you have Surah Al-Anfal. Surah Al-Anfal was revealed after the Battle of Badr, the spoils. Okay, so there's somewhat of a, chron a chronological order now between these three surahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into a different tone. If you guys have been paying attention, you hear a lot about sabr, about patience, trials and tribulations that were faced by the early believers. There were some people that came before us that wanted to just find a way out of every single law that came to them. A law was given to them, they went to the Google of their time until they could find a loophole out of that law and they found the fatwa that they liked and then they, they tailored the religion to their own desires. There's another group of people that held firm to their belief and the pressure that was applied to them was external pressure. It was applied to them by their oppressors. It was applied to them by Fir'aun. It was applied to them by their people. Okay? So they faced the, tr the test and tribulation of now not only having to face the difficulty of being able to practice your faith, but then to practice your faith under oppression. And subhanAllah, it's a very interesting notion here. Think about this. Right? When we complain about the practices of our faith, when we, when we complain about the obligations of our religion, there are people in other parts of the world that are dying to fulfill those same obligations. Right? You know, we complain fasting is too long. There are people in the world that are being tortured because they're trying to fast. Some of you might be keeping up with, with certain provinces in China. SubhanAllah, heartbreaking images of Muslims that are actually being forced down and force-fed. Okay? They're not allowed to fast. Tests are actually carried out on them to make sure that they're not fasting throughout the day. They're dying because they want to fast. Right? We might complain about the obligation of hijab. There are people in, the, in, in some parts of the world, you know, where there's secular oppression. Okay? Uh, you know, a, a sick secular system which is oppressive in its nature, which is more oppressive than any theocracy. And subhanAllah, they're dying to be able to apply the hijab. There, you know, some of us might be complaining about going to the masjid. It's too far away. All right, you know, five minutes is too far away for me. Ten minutes is too far away for me. Or it's too hot in here. Whereas there are certain parts of the world where going to the masjid, you know, in the in Ramadan to pray tarawih means that you might be killed on the way, and you might be going to a masjid that's in ruins. But they still do it. And interestingly enough, when something is taken away from you, when something is being taken away from you, many times that's when you realize how precious it is. So many of these people, had they been in a situation of ease, they might not have sought out to apply those obligations. But now that it's being taken away from them, suddenly the value of it goes up. They have to struggle for it, they have to strive for it. And subhanAllah, here you have people in a situation of ease, neglecting obligation, and you have others in a situation of hardship, that might even at times even be excused from those obligations, insisting on them. So Allah takes us from the description of a people that, you know, that, 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 that find every loophole. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually has rescued these people from oppression. That find every way around every law, and they still find a way to not fulfill those obligations because of their desires. And the corruption, the internal corruption of the nafs. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shifts the tone to a group of believers that not only held on to their faith as they should have, not only practices, practiced it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it to them, but they were willing to undergo any form of oppression that came with it. They accepted the package and all of the implications. SubhanAllah, all of the consequences. So you have this emphasis suddenly on the struggle the tests and the tribulations and reminders to the believers not to respond, not, not, to, not to be deflated, not to be discouraged, not to give in to their enemies, to stay firm, hold firm to your religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, interesting, subhanAllah, it's beautiful. In Surah al it's scary at the same time. In Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَ فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ Allah says, this group of people, Surah Al-An'am, whenever they refuse to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah sent them the hardships, and they still insisted on their evil and their corruption. Allah says, فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ We gave them everything they wanted of the dunya. You know, this is why you're turning your back on Allah? Take it. Here's your wealth. 
here's your comfort. Here's your, you know, here, here, just take it. Go ahead and take it. It's all for you now. If you think this is where your success is, this is where your happiness is, the earthquakes didn't wake you up, the oppression didn't wake you up, none of that woke you up from your heedlessness, go ahead and take it. Hatta idha farihu bima utu. Until they were pleased with that which they had, أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَ فَإِذَاهُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ Allah takes them suddenly. The, the world ends and then you know, the misery of the hereafter begins. So subhanAllah, their chapter is closed. You know what? Fine. Go ahead. Have what you want of this world, but you will have nothing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions another group of people. So after Surah Al-An'am, what surah did we say is next? Since we had a difference of opinion. What is it? Hafaf? Al-A'raf. Okay? Just so the people that are screaming and fell don't get mad at me. Alright? Al-A'raf. Allah says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَتَقَوْ لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah says, had the people had faith and believed, we would have given them barakah. We would have given them blessings in what was given to them. Meaning what? If Allah gives you a hundred dollars, but it's with barakah, it's far greater than a hundred thousand dollars without barakah. Had they simply believed and held firm, Allah would have given them of this dunya, and He would have put barakah in that which He gave to them. So even if it was less than those who Allah gave without barakah, it would have been more for them. Okay? So the dunya part is concerned. For your faith, for your belief, would you be willing to strive? Would you face those difficult circumstances? Right? If someone came to you and told you, you cannot pray, would you stop praying? When you find, subhanAllah, when you find that, that, that oppression is being applied to you, do you allow your fear to turn you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you have faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out for you? And subhanAllah, what's the next surah? Surah Al-Anfal. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the victory of the battle of Badr. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this group of people, the Muslims now, the nation that came from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, those that struggled and strove and faced every form of hardship, murder, um, deportation, they were run out of their homes, right? They faced humiliation, they were cut off by their families, and they were run to a land that they did not know. And when they got to Medina, they got sick. SubhanAllah, they couldn't even handle the water. You know when you go to some places, you, when you drink the water, you get sick? They all got sick when they went to Medina. They were at the mercy of people that they'd never met before, the Ansar. And on top of that, the people of Mecca were still not satisfied. They came to, 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 to execute them in Medina and celebrate over their corpses. But Allah had a different plan. And subhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jalla sent the angels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that small group of believers victory over their oppressors. Why? Because they never let up. They never let up. They held firm. They didn't make the mistakes of the ummahs, that, the ummah that came before them, the nations that came before them. They were a group of people that never let up. SubhanAllah, some of you might have heard that there's an, there's an ayah that was recited. Uh, and, and you know, the end of it says that Al-Ardu Lillah. That the earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gives it to whom He wills, and true victory belongs to the believers. This ayah was revealed towards the end of Mecca. When the Prophet was going to the different tribes to call them to Islam, the, you know, most of the tribes just outright humiliated and rejected him. Some tribes had weird conditions for becoming Muslim. One of them was the tribe of Banu Amr ibn Sa'sa. And they said to the Prophet ﷺ, we will become Muslim on the condition that when you die, the leadership of the ummah comes to us. We inherit this kingdom. Meaning what? We can tell you're a great man. We can tell that you're going to eventually, you know, have, have this entire area under you. So when that happens, subhanAllah, they had a form of firasa. I mean, they could see that the Prophet ﷺ was, was an incredible individual and that he had something behind him. When that happens, we become the kings after you. And the Prophet ﷺ responded with this ayah. Right? I can't do that for you. Allah Azza wa will decide that. Meaning there are going to be no conditions in this. We're going to do this as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do it. And we will abide by it as Allah commanded us to abide by it. And we have no doubt whatsoever that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will eventually bring this ummah out of its, out of its heedlessness and out of its uh, oppression 
to a point of glory. And that's why, subhanAllah, some of the ulama say, and I'll end with this point, Allah did not call Surah Al-Anfal, or, or Surah Al-Anfal is not named by uh, Surah Badr, for example. Al-Anfal means the spoils. SubhanAllah, like the spoils of war have been realized. The spoils of the battle were realized. You went from a situation of being oppressed to being victorious. And that is the outcome for all of the believers that stay firm upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to stay firm on. They remain ethical. They're pleased with what Allah has given them in their lives. So they're, they're not after the dunya. They believe that there's barakah and halal risk and things of that sort. And then they continue to practice their faith despite whatever may come their way. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our iman strong and to allow us to, to, to bear any difficulties that come our way and to make it a source of reward for us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to burden us beyond our scopes and test us beyond what we can handle. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.